Hi, welcome to Best My Test. In today's video, we will talk about TOEFL Integrated Speaking Task 4. By the end of the video, we will give you a template which you can use to form your own responses for Speaking Task 4. In the beginning, let's talk about the general structure of this task. In TOEFL Integrated Speaking Task 4, you will first have 50 seconds to read a passage. The passage provides a general idea and definition of an academic topic. Here, you need to make sure you understand the main idea. You will need this for the next part of this task, because in the next part, you will listen to a lecture which builds up on the main ideas of the reading passage. Accordingly, you should take notes on the main idea while reading it. As I just said, the second part consists of a short lecture from a professor. While the reading passage provides the general idea of the topic, the lecture provides examples to explain the topic further. The professor often provides one or two examples in the lecture. When listening, you should concentrate on the following three things. The academic topic, transition words and examples. This will help you to capture the most important information. Similar to the first part, make sure to take notes on these examples. After this, you will be asked to describe the academic topic, combining the knowledge from the textbook passage and the lecture. You will have 30 seconds, 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. For your response, you should first explain the topic according to your notes on the main idea and then use your own words to explain the examples given in the lecture. Now that we know the structure of this task, let's look at some simple questions. At first, I'll give you 50 seconds to read a passage on an academic concept. Don't forget to take notes during these 50 seconds. Trust me, taking notes will help you to form your responses later. So, here's the passage. If you ever have heard of stage fright, then you are already familiar with the manifestation of the audience effect. My sister can sing like an angel when she thinks she's alone, like when she's in the shower. But once in front of a crowd, it seems as if her voice box clogs up. I, on the other hand, am very comfortable when talking to a large crowd, because the whole crowd seems to lose its identity and I could be under no more pressure than I would be just walking down the street. However, if I'm facing a small group of people, I become considerably more anxious, especially as they can observe me in close quarters. When I was in my early 20s, I was more comfortable speaking to people who were much older than me because they were more mature, but an audience made up of people my own age seemed to be hostile to me in my mind because they would always make fun of me and distract me from my speech. My nephew always plays better soccer whenever his father or I come to watch him, whereas my daughter, who does ballet, always discourages me from coming to watch her dance. One time, I snuck into the dance hall, and she was dancing beautifully, until she spotted me, and she actually fell over two times before the dance was over. Different people thrive and falter under different kinds of audiences, but the consistent thing is the fact that an audience will always have some kind of effect or another upon the performer or the center of attention. As you can see, the question is asking you to explain the academic concept of audience effect with examples. We can structure our response using the following answer template. Note that the X here stands for the concept we are talking about. So for the sample, the X would be audience effect. You can start with, from the reading passage, X is described as. 
And then you could continue saying, the professor illustrates or demonstrates X by giving one or two examples. You can then further describe the examples using in the first example and in the second example. If you then still have time, you should try to find a conclusive summary. For this, you can use transition words like in summary, so or therefore. And then for the conclusion, you can often summarize the examples by using these examples demonstrate or show X. The template, as you can see, is quite straightforward. So let's listen to a sample answer using this template. From the passage, the audience effect is described as the positive or negative impact an audience can have on people during any type of performance. The professor illustrates the audience effect by giving two examples. In the first example, he describes how when he speaks in front of a large audience, he feels comfortable because the group loses all sense of identity. However, in front of a small group, he struggles because the focus is more personal. In the second example, he explains how his nephew performs better at sports even when his family is present, but how his daughter would struggle and fall down at dance recitals whenever he was present, despite doing well when he was gone. These examples clearly show the different effects an audience can have on performance. All right, let's look at another speaking task for question. And then we will practice one more time using our template. Here's the passage. Social interaction is two or more people being aware of each other and creating some form of interaction with each other. By aware, I mean each person involved in the social interaction, regardless of how the interaction takes place, knows that the other person exists and understands what they're doing. For example, two friends writing a letter to each other is a form of social interaction. Although the two friends cannot see or hear each other, both friends are aware of each other and understand what they're trying to do. However, if someone wrote an anonymous letter to a friend, it would not be a social interaction. Although there are two people involved with the letter, only one person is aware of who is involved while the other person is left unaware. Okay, before listening to the sample answer, I suggest you pause this video and try giving your own response using the template we gave you. Remember to set a timer for 60 seconds so that you can get used to that time frame and prepare for your actual TOEFL exam. Now let's listen to a sample answer. From the reading passage, the social interaction is described as two people being aware of each other in an interaction. The professor demonstrates social interaction with two examples. In the first example, two friends are writing letters to each other. In this case, both friends are aware that they're sending each other letters. Hence, this is considered a social interaction. In the second example, the professor demonstrates a non-social interaction by describing a friend sending an anonymous letter to another friend. In this case, only one friend is aware of the other person. Thus, this is not considered a social interaction. To put it briefly, only if people consciously interact like the first example, it is considered social interaction. If that's not the case, as in the second example, the interaction is considered non-social. Alright, this is the end of our video today. 
We have told you how you can paraphrase and structure the academic content you will deal with in TOEFL Speaking Task 4. Next to that, probably the most difficult part is to clearly understand the definitions and examples given in the lecture. That's why in our next video, we will talk about how to better identify concepts and main ideas by focusing on certain keywords. This skill is not only useful for Speaking Task 4, but for Speaking Task 6 and even other tasks as well. So, make sure you subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for more. In addition, you can always go to our website bestmytest.com to practice more TOEFL Speaking Task 4 questions and enjoy all the other material we offer. If you have anything you want to share with us or have questions, let us know in the comments below. It was my pleasure talking to you today and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time.